In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from John 14, verses 1 through 7, where I'll answer the question, why should believers be at peace? John 14, verses 1 through 7 says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also, and you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Jesus is preparing his disciples for what's bound to be their worst possible time. He is preparing them for his death. He is letting them know that he is going to die soon, that they are all going to betray him, but that they will be restored. And in telling them this, he tells them that they should not let their hearts be troubled, that essentially they should be at peace, even though they're about to go through this dramatic experience that is going to absolutely crush them. But he lets them know that even though they're about to suffer, that he is going to bring them back. He is going to place them precisely where he wants them to be. And it's because of this, they should be at peace. So here are three thoughts from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. Thought number one, a place prepared. Jesus tells them that he's going to prepare a place for them. That through his death, through his burial, through his resurrection, through his ascension, he is going and he is preparing a place where they ultimately will go. He is letting them know that just because he is going to die, it doesn't mean that anything is over. It means that things are just beginning. He is letting them in on this dramatic plan that God has had since the fall. This dramatic plan that God has prepared from eternity past. It's all coming to fruition now in this dramatic experience that Christ and his disciples are about to go through. He promises that he is going to prepare a place, and the reason he is going to prepare a place for them is so that he might bring them into it. So be at peace. Thought number two, the way, the truth, and the life. Thomas says, I, I don't know the way to this place that you're going. I don't know where it is. I don't know where we're going. I don't know what you're talking about. And Jesus tells him, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Jesus is explaining to Thomas that the way to get to the place that the Lord is preparing is through him. The way that you get to the place that Jesus has made for his people is by belief and faith and trust in him. This is what he means when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's saying that if you're going to go to the Father, if you're going to go to this, this mansion that is being prepared for the people of God, if you would dwell with the Lord forever, that you must do so through him. And this is one of the primary exclusive claims of Christianity, that it is only through Christ that anyone is reconciled with the Father. That it is only through Christ that anyone will ever get to experience his presence in a positive way. So the believer, the one who has faith in Christ, can be at peace because we recognize that Jesus is the way to the Father. Thought number three, the Father is known. Ultimately, what Jesus is trying to explain to his disciples is that he and the Father are one. And this is one of the emphasis that John has in his gospel. It's one of the things that gets reiterated over and over again, that the Father and the Son are one in the same, that they are different persons of the Trinity, but they are of the same essence. And because they are of the same essence, but different in persons, to know one is to know the other. To know the Son is to know the Father. And if you know the Son, then you know the Father. And this should be something that gives believers a sense of peace. This should be something that causes us to rejoice and to celebrate because in knowing Christ, 
we have known the Father. And having the indwelling of the Spirit, we have fellowship with the Father. And this is a beautiful thing that we who are in Christ, we who are believers, get to experience. We have known the Father because we have known the Son. Because we have known the Father, then we know that we can be at peace. So do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in the Son. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And be at peace. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of John chapters 13 through 15. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.